This is your favorite regular razor uploader. This is episode one. Welcome to another Tech Shop series. Throttle stop again. I get quite a lot of questions saying, tell me what the answer is, blah, blah, blah. And I keep saying, it's not as simple as that. So I'm going to explain why it's not as simple as that and educate people a little bit more on what is happening with your CPU. Let's quickly recap on what's inside a PC case. You have your Intel Core processor. You have your heatsink. You have a fan. You have your NVIDIA graphics card chip with its own heatsink and its own fan. You have incoming fans for bringing in cool air and you have an external fan to blow air out. So here we are with the Razer Blade 15 and it's the same with any other gaming laptop. You get the Intel CPU, you get the NVIDIA chip card, they're sharing a heatsink and they've got two small fans. In a normal situation, they're both running along nice and easy, nothing too intense. The CPU gets a bit more of a request. It heats up the whole heatsink. It then adversely throttles the NVIDIA graphics card so all the frames per second disappears. And then if it gets too hot, both of them then go throttled. Then you have to wait for the heatsink and the ships to cool down and so-called repeat. And that's what throttling is. Let's look more closely on the Intel CPU and its throttling parameters. In normal mode, if it reaches 45 watts, it starts to throttle. In gaming mode, you can go up to 70 watts before it starts throttling. For temperature, if the whole socket hits 90 degrees centigrade, it will throttle. But for an individual core inside the socket, and we've got six of them, if one of those reaches 100 degrees centigrade, then it will throttle. Now for the GPU graphics socket, the temperature maximum for that before it starts throttling is 70 degrees centigrade. So you can understand that if the Intel core processor is producing too much heat, the heat sink, which they share, will transfer that heat across and it will then warm up NVIDIA graphics chip adversely and it will throttle, even though it isn't actually making itself go to 70 degrees centigrade. So what controls do we actually have? Well, there's actually quite a lot and I'm going to go through them at later videos, but before we get to that stage, we need to understand a little bit more how to control or what's happening inside the CPU. So the CPU workload manager tells the core controllers what to do. A core controller has two processors, and if you like, we'll call it A and B. The Intel i7s 8 and 9 generations have six controllers. The workload manager, i.e. the CPU, uses the B processors only when the A processors are busy. So you get A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and B, and so on, etc. These are my observations and understandings at the time of creating this video. The CPU has a maximum core frequency of 4.1 GHz. That's a single processor running at 41 times 100. No, it's not 41 times 100 MHz times 12 processors, because that would be 49.2 gigahertz and the temperatures would be like the surface of the sun so the 41 times is spread between all 12 cores okay next it's process and threads so let's take a typical use for a gaming laptop the game sends a process to the process manager the process manager determines if the process can be chopped up into multiple processes, so it's one or more. Now important, if it's one, it doesn't mean it will start at core processor one. The process manager will determine the least busy core processor and allocate it to the game process request. Let's go through process and thread allocation. As I said before, a single process and single thread does not go for the fastest core, but for the one which is in least in use. And this is showing you an example here. So the game one sends a process which cannot be split into multiple threads. The CPU process manager says, oh, the core number four is only running at 5%. Let's choose that one. And as you can see, that one's multiplied at 30 times. So you're only going to be running at 30 times and not 41. 
So let's say we've got the same game and it now sends that same one process, but it can be split into multiple threads. And as you can see, it's spread all nice and evenly over all six cores. Now, and it's important note again, in that example, the maximum frequency is the lowest used, i.e. they will all run at 25 times. Now that situation is best suited for server CPUs where all the processes run at the maximum frequency. But of course we are talking a whole different situation and a cost point. So what's the best option? Well actually it's the one process, one thread option, but we need to shoot as many of these out as they are core processes. Obviously in our case it's 12 and this is what it looks like. So a little quick understanding recap. We don't want this, and we don't want this. Now there's quite a lot there, and I advise you to watch this a few times before going tweaking anything manually. Now you're probably saying, well, what can we do? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can watch part two. Note, patrons get help direct. Until the next one, as I say, bye.